Okay, hello everybody. Back again. And I wanted to show you a tool that's very helpful if you do sewing of small items or like quilting and that kind of thing. Um, I can't remember if I showed this last time, but I don't think I did. Um, anyway, this is an iron to press open seams when you're quilting. And it gets very, very hot. Now, I got this one at a thrift store for $3, and it did not come with a stand, so that's why you'll see me doing this, because that holds it up off of the fabric, even though that's an iron heat-resistant fabric, but that's a plastic table underneath. And I have melted it before in spots. If you can see, right here is a little divot where this landed on it and melted it. I also managed to hit my old keyboard when I had a desktop computer. And it's got a little scorch mark on it as well. But this thing works great. It's got a on and off switch here. You plug it in on an off switch and then heat from low to high since I'm doing cotton I just leave it on high um, it does get a little cruddy right through here once it's cool I need to clean it this time but I finished two more blocks of my cardinal quilt and I should oh no let me see if it's better without the light no not okay I'll just push it back a bit Okay, anyway, it works really well. Um, you do have to hold it up out of the way since I don't have a holder. But you get your seam, and you know these are like quarter inch seams. And you start getting it open with your finger. And then you can hold it down with the iron as you go. And if you're using cotton fabric, you, high is good, and you can hold it there for a little while, and it won't scorch anything. I haven't had it do anything anyway. And sometimes on these seams with multiple, where there's triangles that meet, there's multiple uh, layers of cloth. This does real well to get it laid down, especially if you just hold it there for you know a few seconds and sometimes go over it again but you can see how nicely that flattens that out and it doesn't take much time this uh, cloth that I'm using because I don't like ironing boards and I don't have room for one um, this is a uh, it's a rectangular piece and each end has two magnets it's meant to fit on the top of your dryer if you have the front loading dryer um, and that's what I where I always used it however we have a laundry room in these apartments so we don't have uh, see there's where I burned it there's where I burned it about a week or so ago because um, it flipped off of that thing um, I don't have a place where I can, you know, iron next to on top of the dryer. And that's not always when I want to do it is when I do laundry, which is about once every 10 days. Um, I don't go through. I'm not working other than here in the house. And I don't, other than underwear and socks and such, I don't necessarily put on new clothes every single day if I don't get dirty in them there's no point to it so about with the amount of underwear I have and the amount of clothes that I have which isn't a great amount but I do laundry about every 10 days unless I've got you know like more towels or sheets or something to do and that's not that not that big a deal anyway this thing works great. Um, this is Clover Needlecraft Ink. Uh, 
model number MCI-900. Uh, 120 volt AC, 60 hertz, 20 watts, made in China. But it seems to be a well-made item. So if you go to Clover Needlecraft Inc., if you can't buy it directly from them, you can probably find it on eBay or Amazon or, you know, one of those kind of, or a crafty site that sells supplies. Um, like I say, I looked into this one at a thrift store. So I was thrilled. I wasn't sure how well I would like it, but since I have tried it out and using it, um, I really enjoy it. It makes ironing open these seams a whole lot easier a whole lot easier and a lot faster than going over to a, a some place that you have set up with an iron regular sized iron and all of that in fact, I, don't, I didn't even bring the iron that I had when I moved because I really don't have clothes that need to be ironed and I just didn't see the point my clothes are either Cotton t-shirts for wearing around the house, which I don't iron. Cotton sweatshirts for wearing around the house, which I don't iron. Um, I have some blouses, but they tend to be uh, polyester or permapress. Um, I do not like to iron. Uh, I had a great aunt that, that she loved to iron. She did that to earn extra income for her family, um, you know, back in the early days of the 40s and 50s and I don't know for how long after that but she did laundry and she did a lot of ironing for people because they didn't want to do it but I don't like to iron I can I'm not bad at it I'm not the best but I'm not bad at it but I don't like it so as you can see that flattened it out very nicely and I've got one more bird to add to my uh, stack here. I now have nine, ten. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I have nine out of 18. I'm halfway there. Um, we have a little crafty night here at the apartments that I started up and there's been three to four of us show up everybody's got their own little project so I've been taking these to sew um, it's just once a week for two hours but you know you get to see people and meet people that you don't know and uh, did I turn it on? Okay. Um, and chit chat uh, we even have one gentleman who comes. He likes to do crafty things. Um, he does string art. He does leather working. He does, um, builds things out of wooden pieces. Uh, he used to teach uh, shop, mechanical drawing, and crafts at a private school. And uh, he's a neat fella. He's quite elderly, but uh, he brings his stuff. And the last two weeks, it's the first two weeks we've had it, he's brought boxes of stuff and organized them because uh, that's something apparently he had not done before. Um, he would just kind of put stuff in boxes and there it would sit until he got around to it. But he's been organizing and seeing exactly what he's got to make what. And, you know, it's more fun to do that when you've got people around and somebody to talk to. And so it, it's been very, very pleasant. Um, one of my friends, my new friends here, she does crochet. So she's been bringing her crochet with her. And then another lady has been coming. And she's um, she had knitted a cover. It looked like knitting. It could have been crochet, but I think it was knitting. I'm not sure. Um, I don't do crochet. I do a very small amount of knitting, but it has to be very simple. 
anyway it was like a ripple pattern and um, she made a cover for a pillow and it was a variegated yarn in muted colors uh, blues and greens turquoises peaches uh, but muted colors and so she was covering her she had finally finished the the yarn part of it the cover itself and so the first week when she came she brought it in the pillow and she was uh, sewing on the decorative buttons on the ends they they weren't actually going to be used as buttons but they were decorative and they were multicolor um, that matched the yarn and um, then she just stitched closed the end so she finished her pillow that first night so that was cool and then there's me with my little birds. I figured, you know, it's winter in Colorado. It's freezing cold every single day. It doesn't get above freezing at this point. Um, at night, it's below zero. And uh, we're getting more snow today. Sun's just popped out again, but we've been getting snow off and on. They said we were going to get one to three inches, which isn't that bad. Um, it's not that much snow. The good part about it is that the snow here, at least so far, and I've been here since October, so far the snow is not the heavy wet stuff I where I like I grew up in Michigan. And... Uh, it's it's dry and kind of powdery, which I guess is good for the skiing here. I don't ski. And it's it'll pack down, but it's interesting how they do the roads here. They have these big uh, snow trucks or snow plows. Great big long thing made by Caterpillar. Um, and they'll come through and they'll scrape and move the snow depending on how wide the street is sometimes they scrape it into the middle and then like the next day they'll come back and they scoop all that up put it in a dump truck and haul it away um, but generally what I see is that they they scrape that down it's still hot um, they scrape the snow off to the sides onto the, the curb or um, to the, the corner and pile it up on the corners and then they'll come clean that part out away. Um, they don't remove all the snow from the road. If it melts off, that's fine. They do not uh, scrape it all away. And I don't see, they don't use salt here. There are a few stores that I see that have used that salt replacement stuff they're using now. Or they'll use sand. Here at the apartments, they use sand. After they've, you know, gone out and shoveled the sidewalks and what have you, they'll use uh, sand to uh, make sure it's not slippery. And I think the reason that they don't totally clear off the road with salt or anything else is that that will melt the snow but it doesn't evaporate fast enough to not create ice and ice is the big problem so sometimes especially like it at intersections when you're going to be stopping you may come across and you so you learn real fast I did you slow down, take your foot off the gas before you get to the stop sign or the stop light and be ready to just pump your brakes because if there's ice underneath that snow and it hasn't grabbed hold of each other yet, um, you can slide a little bit. But if you're going slow, and it's only 30 miles an hour here in town anyway, no matter where you go. So I'm usually only doing like 25 if there's snow. I'm not used to it. I haven't lived in snow in 40 years. So, and I haven't really driven much in it except for here. Um, a couple of times in Michigan because of when I left. Um, 
So that's the story on the snow and the story on the craft get together and the story on the tool. So that's it for today. And hopefully I'll be back again maybe next week. Um, I'm going to try and get more regular about this if I can. It is much easier to make one of these little videos when nobody else is home, which isn't all that often. It's like it's not every day or anything. Um, but I don't want to be interrupted. I don't need a bunch of questions about what are you talking about? What are you showing? It's just easier to do things when nobody else is here. Anyway, those of you that have a family or children or significant others that are nosy <laughs> will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we'll catch you guys next time. Have a great day.